Hotel on pickup. It's got a cop motor, a 440 cubic inch plant. It's got cop tires, cop suspension, cop shocks. It's a model made before catalytic converters, so it'll run good on regular gas. What do you say? Is it the new blues mobile or what? Fix a cigarette lighter. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Clunkers and Classics. Back to the continuing adventures of restoring this muscle car. Uh, what I've got done so far is I built off a parked car. I put this little bracket here. I welded it. I don't even think you can see the welds. I welded it to this little bracket here and here and then bolted it on. So now we got the gas cable, accelerator cable, right even with it. It's just perfect now. And then the other car had some extra springs on it. This is the spring I had. But the other car had these springs. I just stuck them on there. Then it had one for the transmission kick down. So uh, I just put that on there. In fact, I think the one from this car probably goes from here to here, but whatever. Uh, let's see what else. The radiator's leaking at two spots from here down, but not enough to drip. It just gets wet from here about halfway down from there and over here down. Now, the last radiator I bought off of eBay for my Chevelle was like uh, 69 bucks or something so I thought well I can get a you know brand new $69 type radiator for this nope they make them but they're like three and four hundred bucks and if you want a two core aluminum $699 crazy so uh, luckily, I got parked cars. I took this one out of the 87 Fifth Avenue. Okay, I was going to put it in there, but we got an old drip from the uh, timing cover seal where the uh, uh, harmonic balancer goes in. So there's no use putting a radiator in until I get a gasket and seal kit for that. So I have to take all the front apart. And I'll do that all at once. Now that rate, this radiator here, uh, I had this car running. I was using it as a push car around here for the junkers, clunkers. So it it didn't leak, although it looks kind of bad. But I don't know. You know, years ago you could uh, there was a radiator shop on every corner. Now I don't know if I can find one to either repair that one or repair the one that's in this because there's no way I'm paying 400 bucks for a cheap used one or 700 for an aluminum one. Okay, so that's what I did up front here. Now, in this car was these parts, these sway bar parts. And it's got some markings on it from a junkyard. That's where it was here right here and it says F I guess for an F body sway bar so I have this customer of mine comes over every now and then he's getting parts off that 5th Avenue so he was here today he knows quite a bit about Chrysler's and he says yep that's for a, for one of these but uh, it's from a cop car and he told me how it mounts this deal here mounts to the body and you have to have this deal on there. This is where the springs go. And then the uh, sway bar mounts in that hole. That, this hole here mounts up where that is. See? And even it even has these deals. So, you know, I thought this car was at a junkyard, which it, which it probably was. But then at one some point, some guy rounded up these cop car sway bar and mounts to put on it. It never did. There's the other one. And then inside on the uh, console is a new box of bushings. These little uh, nuts and bush bushings and stuff. So I got all the parts to put it on. 
so the next thing is uh these leaf springs are there's five of them on there on the other rt i hate to call it a parts car because i but i'll never get around to restoring it but i'll call it a parts car for now it has six it has two medium ones so should i put an extra leaf on there if that was a factory option uh the 76 aspen parts car uh showed you the other day the other video he had two brand new shocks for the front and boxes these were two brand new ones that he put on the back so i just took them off uh i use them so i got new shocks all for free to put on here also from the 76 aspen uh i took this bumper off of it it's just mint mine you've seen the previous video all this was complete rust and this one is just really just mint compared to the other one plus it's got the little bumper guards on it and as you can see with mine i think they must have been towing around the junkyard or something this area here is just all bent bent to shit and the inside of it's just all rust so that's coming off uh from the fifth avenue which i got the radiator from i got the gas tank also just took that off and it's in mint shape too no rust or anything so i'm going to clean all that up probably paint it and get all new uh hoses here and it's still got some gas in it and this one i drove yeah, six months ago, using it as a push vehicle, and I put five gallons of fresh gas. So there's going to be no crap in, in this gas tank. It hadn't been sitting up for, it was a daily driver before that, before I got it. So it hasn't got any sludge or rust or anything inside. So I'm going to put that in here. As you can see from the other video, it looked like a forklift or something up in that got up in that gas tank so we're taking that off and since it's we're under here I ordered see here's the back of the bumper you know that rust just a mess hopefully the bolts come off <laughs> I don't have torches but I got a cutting wheel uh, what was I gonna say we're gonna change the bumper the gas tank well the bumper really needs to stay off until I paint it because I got to do the quarter patch panels and all that but I'm just gonna put it on and just snug the bolts up just so it looks good for you know could be six months before I get going on the bodywork okay the leaf springs we're gonna put an extra leaf in there we're gonna put those brackets see where the shock mounts over there that's where those ones go with the, the deal for the sway bar so we're going to take all that apart and probably clean it all up and paint it all before we put it on there. Uh, I still don't know whether it's a posse, but from what that one guy says, uh, that's the only drain hole. That little plastic plug uh, to put fluid in. There's no drain hole in it. So I want to change the fluid anyway. You know, it's 40, 43 years old. So we're going to take off all the bolts. And I'll be able to tell whether it's a posse or not. Uh, if it isn't, we're going to, the RT, other parts car, we're going to take the cover off that. And if that one's a posse, we're going to take the rear end out of that and put it in this one. Okay, so we got all that work to do. And that wasn't even going to be included in <laughs> restoring this thing. But I got to put the extras on there that it came with, the extra leaves and then... The, the new shocks and the gas tank and the bumper uh, and I don't well I'd like this thing raised up I'm not sure whether I want to get shackles which I usually use or air shock I'm not going to get air shocks or uh, get the leaf springs re-arched if I can find a place around here that does it I might do that or buy a brand new leaf spring that's stick it in there as it you know, I need it raised up a couple more inches. Put some wide tires and stuff on it. So, uh, 
I believe that's all I wanted to go through at this little segment here before I get going. Uh, showed the dual police interceptor snorkeler there. We're going to clean that up and paint it. Same with the tires, rims. Uh, going to do all that. Oh, the uh, two front brake lines are completely shot. Uh, right here. You can see right here it's broke. See that? So I'm going to go get two brand new uh, brake, line, brake hoses for the front. I'm not sure about the back yet. And then I showed you in the last video the, the new uh, disc brakes for the front that was in that parts car, brand new in the box. So, I don't know, I may have to, to uh, turn the rotors on these, but we got the brake, part, brake pads, and then we're going to get the brake hoses. And once this, this is where all the fluid's been leaking from. But I don't know, we'll probably blow out these hoses, or pump them there see what comes out of them so we got that to do uh, what else did I want to go over I guess that's about it for this segment okay so all we will be back in a little while why well, not a little tomorrow a little while for you guys and uh, see what we get accomplished tomorrow or the next day I just been busy pulling all these parts today and dealing with a customer customers and stuff so i will see you next segment now for some magic you can easily turn our basic aspen coupe into an eight cylinder rt with a unique look and special tires heavy duty suspension rally road wheels special grill body and deck lid stripes or turn your rt into rt super pack what's that an aspen with a performance appearance Add a T-bar roof for a convertible feel, and you've got another look. The RTs from Dodge, and they all start with Aspen. Okay, guys. I took the cover off the rear end. Uh, it's not a posse. Or sure grip, whatever they call it. But it is the big one. I guess this is the eight and a quarter. And the other, other supposedly six cylinders come with the seven and a quarter so i checked the other rt and it's the little housing so i guess it's the seven and a quarter so i didn't bother taking the the cover off you know i don't think they made the posi in the seven and a quarter but anyway this is the big one uh there's some numbers here i'm gonna run them And I'm going to put the cover back on before I scrape all this stuff off of it. Because uh, I don't want to get any dirt inside them gears. It was full of fluid, which is good. Here's the fluid. It actually came out looking pretty good, but there was a lot of sludge in the bottom of it. So, I'm going to uh, put some gasket sealer. And put the cover back on. Fill it up with uh, some new, brand new fluid and i'll run them numbers later i guess it'll tell me what gears it is and i'll clean out the housing see if there's any more numbers on there but for right now it's an eight and a quarter non-posi so it stays in here i was hoping the other rt was a posi but it's just a little rear end so that dispels the myth that the eight and a quarter is coming uh, what i say before it's supposed to come in the wagons the heavy duty and a V8. Well, the other RT is a V8, but it just had the little seven and a quarter. Uh, the only other rear end I have is from that Fifth Avenue, and it, it actually it's a it looks a little bit different axle-wise where it comes out. The housing is different, but it looks like a big thing too. So I don't know. Maybe I can take the cover off that. Maybe it's a posi and put it in here. But for now, this one's staying in, and I'm about to take these brackets off and put on that uh, the mounts for the sway bar, and fix and take the gas tank out. Uh, I'm in no rush on that gas tank yet because I'm waiting on some pour 15, and I'm going to coat all above the gas tank with that first, and then put the tank in, and then we'll run new lines 
and uh, see if she'll run on her own. But anyway, I'll be back next segment. We got it. We found your fuel pump. You did? You, you're going to bring the Dodge back to life? I'm a Dodge specialist, not a miracle worker, but I'll do all I can. Okay, guys, give you a little update here. Uh, I got, there's the old gas tank there. And there's the one on the Fifth Avenue. I dumped the gas out. It was actually pretty clean. Uh, I scraped off a lot of the, that was old uh, oil sludge and everything from the, from its rear end on the Fifth Avenue. And I need to run up to the parts store and get new lines for they're all three different sizes. Get a couple of feet of them. Uh, took off the brakes, drums. They're not too bad, but I'm gonna see if, they actually look kind of thin, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll bring them into O'Reilly's and get them turned. The brake pads themselves are pretty thin. But I blew all the, it don't look too bad, really. Uh, just blew all the cobwebs and dust and stuff out of there. They don't look too bad. And the drums weren't rusted on there, nothing. They come right off. So I got that going. Uh, there's a better view of the trunk. I still haven't got it all cleaned out. I need to pull everything out of here. But I, I scraped a lot of the crap off there. Uh, so you can see the trunk, they had left the, somebody had taken the little plugs out. So that's what that's what saved the trunk. And underneath here, hey, this is above the gas tank. It's really not too bad. I may not have to pour 15 this. It's cleaned up real good. But I ordered that pour 15 through the through eBay, so I'm kind of waiting on it. I think I could get some at a parts place, but they want you know 20 bucks more court and I get it on eBay but I'm ready to put it in I'll decide what to do I may just slap it in there uh, filled it up with royal purple differential fluid on the rear end so that's what I got now and um, I'm keeping this build uh, very detailed every little thing I do on it it's not just to bore you guys, it's just for a historical, uh, you know, record of the build. And I can go back on it and see what I've done and uh, stuff like that. Because, uh, well, just to see it. Oh, the uh, drive shaft, the U-joints are shot. I'll show you. shut I gotta give I'll get a pair of u-joints there's a better look at that hole there so yeah uh, I write all this stuff down that I spent on it what I've done but a lot of times I forget and uh, this will just be a record of uh, so I got so many cars I forget which ones need oil changes and did I check the rear end fluid in that one and so this is on record, you know, I just changed the fluid on it, so, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I took the old exhaust off. There was the old, uh, old, uh, muffler and tailpipe. That was a console that was in the trunk. Made a big mess. Oh, this little thing here. See, this was the same deal as those uh, sway bar deal, uh, deals. He must have went to a wrecking yard and got them. This is an Aspen battery box, but it's disintegrated since it's been in there. Uh, see, it's a bat battery thermo guard. I don't know if they put them in all of them or just maybe for cars up north. It looks like it's supposed to, you know, keep the battery from freezing or something. But it was probably in good shape, and but it's just disintegrated into a bunch of pieces. But anyway, I would have never known that was a, that would, came with the car. So, uh, if any of you have one of them, that's what they originally came with. 
on these battery deals. I'll probably just throw this out, but just so I have a record of it. So I guess whoever, somebody that owned it in the past rounded up these parts from the junkyard and we're gonna put them on this. So anyway, I'll be back a little bit later with an update. I'm just gonna run out and get something to eat and probably round up at least them gas lines and stuff for now. Take Maybe take them drums in to get them turned. And get the, uh, see, I got the new front brake pads for the front already. Uh, I'll have to look at the rotors, see if they need to be turned, but I'm gonna do the back for now. Probably get this little, the two front rubber lines here were shot. This one I probably should replace it too if they got it. It's not broke, but it's, you know, 40, 43 years old. So if they got that and the two front ones, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and get them. And I don't know about the uh, cylinders here. They don't, they're not leaking now, but you never know. They might be. I'll probably just save that for later. Get some fluid pumping through there, see if they start leaking. Anyway, I'll be back with another update here in a little while. Yeah, it is cool. These here are the sleekest, sexiest lines American engineers could come up with. But just the name itself bespeaks power and wealth. Dodge. That about says it all. Okay, guys, I got the uh, gas tank from the Fifth Avenue in there. And there's the new gas lines there. I put some uh, pour 15 in the trunk. I did a separate devoted video to pour 15 where I did part this partial trunk and uh, I used up the rest of the court uh, underneath here. So everything's not coated. I just got, I coated around the gas tank where it mounts for now. Uh, there's that little vent. So I got all new rubber there. new rubber right here except for the little vent one I didn't have enough and then hang on a second keep forgetting to turn that damn radio off okay uh, the new lines down here for the fuel pump it has a uh, the main line going into the filter I got a new filter and then from that filter has a little line going back to the return. Okay, then the uh, vent was all solid, except for this line here. I didn't replace that. Okay, then the factory deal here showed that before where I cut it off. So it's actually got two filters now. Got filter down there and then this one. So we'll give her a shot. Amazing in the gas gauge works. That's all the stuff from the Fifth Avenue. That uh, gas tank. I left the whole sending unit and everything in there. So when you turn the key on, it works. And all the all the gauges work, temperature gauge works. Uh not sure about the alternator, but it just stays there in the middle. Like the braking oil light there, light comes on. Okay, so the fuel system is done. I put in like half a tank, about seven gallons. So she's good. Uh, I'm doing the brakes next. I'll probably make a devoted video for drum brakes. But I gotta go pick them up. They were special order. Those in the uh front brake lines I'm not gonna replace this rear brake line it's not broke I know it's old but 
for now I'm just gonna leave it but I still have to take these uh, springs apart and put on those other uh, mounts for the sway bar but anyway I'll be back in a little bit okay guys here's a quick update be quick for you on the work I done but it took me all day yesterday to get this sway bar in so I just want to show you just in case y'all want to put one on if you can find one apparently they're just in the police interceptors or the uh, special order I guess so this is the sway bar here uh, first thing I had to do was change these brackets here okay and so I had to take off the four u-bolts jack it up put this plate on uh, it had some new bushings and nuts and washers and everything in the console like I said I think somebody was planning on putting this in they got it from the junkyard okay so you need that hole to mount it then it comes up and it mounts in the body right here there's two bolts here and there's two bolts on the other side and there's and there was holes already in there these are basically self-tapping bolts but there was two holes in here to line it up I didn't see them at first initially I thought I'd have to drill some holes and put some nuts and bolts in there but the line right up there okay then it goes across I did put in the shocks slightly used shocks from that green one I got the brand new ones I'm gonna put in the front but that's a sway bar there it goes up and behind it we can see on the other side of, I'm not quite done I gotta put the two bolts on the inside of the uh, brackets so it took me all day because Here's one new bolt, and here's the other. Two of them busted out of the four. <laughs> and let me tell you, these things were in there. Uh, had to use a big half inch with a cheater bar on it. And just inch at a time getting these things off. Uh, the impact wouldn't do it. So I was under there, just biggest workout I've done in quite a while. Getting them things out of there. And of course they broke. I had to go over to the parts car and uh, take them off there. I still got one more to go right here. So that's what I'm fixing to do. Get under there, crawling around like a monkey and get all dirty again. And get one more U-bolt here. And then put the two bolts on the inside and then I'm done other than painting it still waiting on some more pour 15 and I'll get up under there like Picasso and and uh, paint everything under there black so in one of these shots everything is gonna be all painted black under there so I'm gonna try to get that done I thought I was hoping to get it all done yesterday but so once that's in there, they, they uh, go to the uh, front brakes and the drive shaft uh, to uh, change the U-joints. So I think that's about it. I'll be glad when this whole rear end stuff is done. All the major stuff. So anyway, that's a quick update. And uh, I'll come back with another segment in a little while. Okay, folks, I'll show you one of the reasons uh, I'm fixing this car up. I used to have a 77 Plymouth Volari I, I had when I was a kid. That's when I bought it. And this is a little while later. Uh, jacked it up with shackles and put craggers on it. Now it was just... Uh, slant six with a four speed standard and uh, I got fog lights in the grill because some idiot tow truck driver hooked it up wrong and uh, 
busted out my grill. I had slid off the road and ice. Here's a couple of bigger pictures of it. You can see it. I painted some blue along the bottom and the back between the tail lights. There's that other same picture, just bigger. Yeah, I hated to get rid of it. I had it for a couple of years. I delivered pizza with it. I racked up 50,000 miles in about a year and a half on it. It was a great car. So that's one of the reasons I'm fixing this one up. Uh, of course, I always wanted an RT, but I love the gas mileage in the Slant 6, but I always wanted an RT with the big V8. So anyway, just thought I'd show you them pictures. Okay guys, it's the end of the day today. I got that uh, sway bar bolts buttoned up. So that's all done. And then uh, I've been doing this front brakes. You know, I had the new brake pads here that were in that green parts car. Uh, but these brake pads that were on the car actually look brand new. Well, not brand, brand new, but brand new I never used back whenever I guess the guy I bought it from might have done something to this because the rotors look the rotors look brand new too not one groove in them they're either brand new or they've been turned uh, of course I took the rotor off uh, wheel bearings inner outer races and all that look good uh, I just repacked it all with uh, bearing grease and all that's done so that looked good I got my you know my free new shocks that were in that green car also put them on there uh, then I put my new hose on both sides put them on there I had filled the master cylinder up with fluid so when uh, this hose was disconnected. It was all dripping both sides. So there's all fluid coming in from the steel lines coming into here Now the only problem I could conceivably have is the master cylinder and the calipers But everything else is done. So if I got a problem with them, I'll replace them. But so far it's just been it, uh, all, all free stuff free brake pads free shocks uh, except for these hoses that's it same with the, the back brakes I had the free back brakes the free spoiler or the sway bar and all that so this car's not cost me too much so far and then this there's another deal looks like it's from a junkyard like if you replace this rotor or caliper uh, also, the spindles look great. No grooves, no nothing. Uh, and I got my new shock and the new brake line on this side. So I think we're all done for the front end. I mean, everything else looks okay. Uh, and this is this is the brake fluid leak here. But this is that oil leak that I think is getting worse. I have to check it from the uh, front of the timing cover seal. Anyway, I'll be back with another update. Okay, guys. Uh, I took the bumper off that 76, but it's too thin right here. It won't fit over this little strip and the big strip on the 76 is out to here it's all warped and everything so I found a problem with the bumper with the two shocks here were all bent where they've been yanking around with a chain those are the two off the car so I took the two off the 76 and then I think we'll use this bumper the same bumper I pour 15 that. Uh, 
I got some more poor 15 underneath here. Uh, she's looking pretty good. I kind of put it on in little batches because it drips and everything and uh, I, it drips on the ground. I can't roll around on the ground getting under there. But anyway, Uh, I can't get no fluid, brake fluid coming out the back. Uh, I may buy a new master cylinder and a brake booster. Uh, the guy that was taking parts off that 5th Avenue stole them from me. Well, bought them from me. He rounded up a bunch of parts, so, uh, I'll see what it costs new. Anyway, I got the front brakes bled. Just that anyway I'm gonna wrap up this video uh, next video we're gonna to have to get some body work done on this because it's looking it's looking pretty bad the city towed my car away again this morning they keep thinking it's an abandoned car why pay it's a Dodge Al <laughs> Anytime you see a Dodge, you think it's abandoned. So anyway, uh, subscribe, like, comment, hit the notification button, all that stuff, and we'll get rolling on this some more next video. And uh, appreciate y'all watching, and we'll see you next video. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it.